organizers for their continuing effort in this uh, successful conference in this relaxed uh, atmosphere. And uh, yes, uh, so I will uh, uh, talk about the risk transfer equilibrium, and this is a joint paper with the authors you see over there. And uh, with I will also present uh, a second paper which is joint with Alessandro Dordi, which is uh, one of my PhD students. So the topic uh, is uh, about uh, risk uh, transfer equilibrium, which uh, is a concept that goes back to the Bullman notion of equilibrium risk transfer. And uh, we conjugate this uh, approach with uh, a capital allocation, which is also based on utility maximization. Okay? And uh, in the second part uh, of the talk, I will extend this uh, notion, which we call uh, SORTE, okay, systemic optimal risk transfer equilibrium. We extend it uh, adding a truly multivariate component, systemic component, and uh, so we call it a multivariate SORTE. The, okay? the, the, before giving the, the intuition about what is it, uh, just to say that this can be applied in several different uh, settings, okay? typically equilibrium among countries or agent or financial institution, but also in all these other possibilities. For example, the Bullman original notion was uh, established for considering insurance or insurance contract in the insurance or insurance market. But you can also think of wealth distribution or capital reduction and uh, so forth. So since uh, it can be applied to different uh, contexts, let me just give you that I will simply call an agent in any of these different contexts. So it could be any, it could be a country, a financial institution, or a single bank. And uh, the class of this N agent, I will call it a system. And uh, the individual risk of each agent is X1 to Xn. So we have N agent. So these are random variables, and this represents the risk vector. And depending on different setting, could be the future profit and loss or the random endowment. Okay, I just will consider this as the original risk uh, of the financial institution or the generically of the agent. And, and the amount that can be exchanged among this agent, I will denote with y. Okay, y1 to y n. This also a random allocation, and I will go and define them later on. So the setting also is very simple because we consider one period only, no interest rate, and uh, each agent is characterized by a single utility function. This will be generalized in the second part. And uh, as I said, Xn so is a, a random variable which represents uh, a measurable <coughs> function at the final time, so measurable with respect to some given sigma algebra at the, at the final time. Okay? This is the very simple setting. So let me recall what is a risk exchange equilibrium. A risk exchange equilibrium, so the agents are allowed to exchange the risk with the other agent, and the way they exchange is with this amount, yn, depending on the final event here, and uh, in exchange, they they exchange this risk, but they have to pay some amount, okay? So they either receive or provide YN, and they either provide or receive the pay, the cost of this YN, okay? And of course, what is Q is part of the solution of the problem to find the pricing equilibrium measure. And in order that this po is possible, this clearing, uh, this mechanism is possible, we need to, that the YN, this risk exchange among the agent, has to satisfy a clearing condition. So even though each component, Y and X, itself is a single random variable, when you sum them, they are a given number, okay? Pure Mosure. And this is why we define the set CR, which will play a role in all this uh, talk, is the set of random vectors. So each component is a random variable here, but the sum of the component is a given number, any given number. And uh, so now the idea of Bullman was written here. So what is a risk exchange equilibrium is a, a pair of Y and Q such that Yn maximize the single agent expected utility uh, uh, among all the va random variables Y that satisfies this budget constraint while Xn is the initial worth, okay? 
However, not only this condition, because the y has to satisfy also the clearing condition, which now is expressed in this form. The sum of the yn must be equal to the number, which is the sum of the xn. The key point here is that Qn, Q is part of the solution of the problem, the pricing, and here we have only one single pricing probability. And if you look at problem A by itself, it only depends on N, so the, on the agent N, except, by, except for the equilibrium pricing measure Q, because otherwise, you see, the, the, the fact that Yn maximize the single agent will never be that then the sum of this will be a constant, okay? So it's only through the fact that you have also to select the probability measure such that the solution of this single agent problem will satisfy this condition. And uh, <coughs> so, of course, then the idea is that the agent needs to be cooperative because they have to exchange this uh, <coughs> random variable and the cooperation is at the final time. So, this is for the risk uh, transfer equilibrium. Now we go to a different concept, which is systemic capital allocation. So suppose, and then we will join the two concepts. So suppose that we have a total amount A at disposal of the system, okay? And we have to, we want to allocate, okay? And this quantity A is given, okay? And uh, we can uh, try to allocate this total amount among the agent in the system. And so if AN is the cash received or provided by the agent N, the final wealth will be the original risk, XN, so this is a random value, plus the capital, the cash A, received or provided by the agent. So one possible criteria to allocate the total amount A would be to solve this problem, okay? So you select the AN, which maximizes the maximum expected utility of the whole system. And now, if you look, since A is determined today, is a deterministic quantity, this uh, requires cooperation among the agents because this is not, each agent is not uh, maximizing his own utility function. It's cooperation only at the initial time because when A is known, is at the initial time. So the idea of the approach that I want to present here is simply to conjugate these two approach and uh, in a way that uh, <coughs> we can increase the optimal expected utility by using random allocation, and at the same time, guarantee that each agent will be rationally behaving, so we'll optimize his own single expected utility. Of course, an alternative assumption of cooperation is that these rules are enforced by some regulator. So let's see how we can introduce intuitively this notion of sorte, so, as I said, suppose for the moment, but this will not be the case, suppose for the moment that AN is assigned, then, as in the Burman approach, YN will optimize the single agent expected utility under a given budget constraint, but QN now, the, the, the budget here depends only also on the probability of each agent. So now it's not one single probability, but each agent will have a QN. And again, the pricing function will have to be selected so that the optimal solution of this problem for each agent will also satisfy the clearing condition, which now is the sum of the component of Y is the constant A. And however, as I said, the A and N are not given exogenous results, so, but are part of the solution, and this leads to the definition of the concept that we want to propose, which is the optimal way to allocate the total amount A into the system is the solution, so we have three vectors here, ve vectors of exchange variables, vectors of probability measures, vectors of the budget uh, constraint A, which are the solution of this problem. So inside here, you see each agent is rationally behaving because he's optimizing his expected utility under a given budget constraint. Everything depends on n. But then you are also taking the supremum over or n, satisfying this condition. And in addition, Q, Q has to be set such that the optimal solution here satisfies the budget constraint. Okay, which is the clearing condition, sorry, the clearing condition, which is this one, okay? So this is what we want to investigate, and uh, just let me repeat that each agent 
in this context is behaving rationally, but the uh, uh, budget constraints are an, an endogenous determined through the optimization problem I was presenting before, because the A and N are also part of the solution. Okay? In this way, clearly, we are taking a larger expected utility than if we would consider Y to be deterministic. So we are increasing the uh, systemic uh, optimal uh, utility. And this requires, uh, so the, the idea that we can achieve this is that we require cooperation, not only at the initial time, but also at the later time. So an increasing cooperation will increase the systemic performance. This is the basic idea. And now we will formalize what I just said in this introduction, and we will show existence, uniqueness, Pareto optimality, and then we will generalize this to a a more general setting. So, but now the precise formulation is the following. So, we have to start uh, with some uh, <coughs> space where the uh, random variable lives. So, call it L. Could be L infinity, or we will consider all this space. But this is not the key point here. And then we also consider vectors of probability. We use this symbol for vectors of probability. And L one Q is just the product of integrable random variable. One additional feature that I didn't uh, talk till now was that is that we have also introduced a set B where the feasible location must be wrong. So a set which represents some constraint, and at the end I will represent, I will give some example of this set. So Y has also to satisfy this additional constraint. And the fact that the optimal uh, measure so the equilibrium pricing measure will depend on the selection of B, and this is what also another difference uh, with respect to the Boomman approach, where the, he had only one single probability because he had no feasible, no constraint. So, just to make precise, I recall what is CR, so random vector having such that the sum of the component is a number, and we will require that the feasible allocation Y has to belong to a subset of this one, and also says to satisfy some integrability condition in order to make uh, for the mathematics of the problem. So these are the standing assumptions, are very classical. Uh, about the utility function we use, they satisfy the another condition. This one is the classical condition that you see in a utility maximization problem with uh, reasonable asymptotic elasticity, was introduced by Schackermeyer uh, many years ago. And uh, here just the notation, we have a utility function and Vn is the con convex conjugate of the utility. Also, some assumption on the constraint set must be a convex cone, close, and probability eh, in order to get the existence result. So just two slides for the setting. So we have a, a utility function u, and the, from the utility function u, which is of this form, we take function phi, which is of this form here, okay? This is the function phi. Start giving a u, we build the function phi, and so we can build the Orris spaces, which is the Orris heart here, and then once we have the function phi, which is a young function, we build the convex conjugate, which called phi star, and then we build also the Orris space associated to phi star. So these are two classical integrability conditions that are linked to the problem we want to solve. Okay, and since we don't have just one utility, but many utility, we have many associated young functions, phi1, phi n, the convex conjugate. We have the product space of the Orris uh, heart and the product space of the Orris space, okay? So associated to phi star and two. And the duality we will explode is exactly between n phi, m phi, and l phi star. In this setting, when we generalize, we have to change the duality. So, B0 is the set of random allocation such that the sum is a number by definition because B is included in CR, but this number now is zero. This is why you see here B0. And these are the set of random variable such that the overall value is less than or equal to zero, okay? And uh, this, in some sense, uh, replaces the idea of replicable claims in the theory of security markets. And so we want to, to build the dual element. So the dual element is the polar of this set, the polar taking with respect to some given space, and the space is the Orris uh, uh, 
um, heart here. So you see Q is simply the polar of this set, are all fair probability measure. Those probability measure which evaluate the element here such, do I, such that the expectation is less than zero. This replaces the idea of Martinger measure in the other setting, okay? And then uh, we have to take this restriction, this is usual, this is uh, so that the fair measure with bounded uh, with finite entropy. Given this, now we define exactly what we mean by sort. So we have, uh, no, first uh, we recall what is a risk exchange equilibrium on a Bullman. So this is the utility maximization of the single agent given a single utility, sing a single probability Q, this single probability Q. And the definition of Bullman is just this one. I, I already uh, introduced it. Just notice that we have one condition, Y is optimal for here, and Y has to satisfy the clearing condition, and one single optimizer, and he gives some sufficient condition for existence. The point to observe is that the vector A is uh, exogenous assigned here, okay? Given A, we have this definition. Now, in our definition, we have the same <coughs> expected utility of, uh, of the single agent, but now also the probability depends on N, so we have a vector of probability. And in addition to this problem, we want also to optimize this maximum ex systemic expected utility given or with respect to our A satisfying the budget constraint. So we have these two optimization problems, and what we are looking is to this uh, triple of uh, random allocation, probability vectors, and the constants uh, and uh, random um, vector in Rn, which, for which Yn is optimal for the first, like in the Burman. Y has to satisfy the same clearing condition, but an additional A is optimal for <coughs> this problem, okay? So A is optimal for this one. And we are looking for both Y and both Q. Exactly. So this, uh, we, we, we start with a different, uh, different possible probabilities, but under some assumption, this will be only one unique price as in Bullman. But this is not necessarily the case because the fact that we also assume that Y belongs to B will force this to be different pricing measure. So it will be a consequence if you take no restriction on B. Then you have only one single uh, and uh, I am not giving all the details here, but actually we can start with much more general functional expression here. And so here is a linear, okay? We could start by any cash additive and uh, uh, monotone pricing functional depending on N, and then we would find that solution that is linear, okay? So this is also part, but I, I, I skip this. So, but as you say, yes, if you want one single pricing function, you have to renounce to abandon the fact that uh, you have this restriction. So just uh, to, before giving the result, uh, I recall what is a Pareto allocation given a set of feasible allocation V, and uh, uh, Y hat is a Pareto allocation if there is no other Y which is better off, okay, than Y hat, so such that if Y is also feasible and Y is better off than Y hat for our N, then they must be equal, okay? Now, so the result is that, under the assumption I gave, there exists uh, <coughs> such a concept, and uh, with the optimizer is equivalent to P, and okay, we explicitly what is the set L, and the other result is that uh, <coughs> under one additional assumption on the set B, not only it exists, it is unique, and it is a Pareto optimal allocation. Okay, these are the two main results, and I will not enter into the proof, but just few remarks. Okay, first, what is a B close under truncation? It is, we will remove this actually in the more general setting. We will replace with something else. But for this being is that um, if you start with an element in the set B, B has to satisfy this property. If Y is in B, then you can truncate Y with sufficiently large uh, M, replace uh, with a constant, then this YM must also belong to B. 
Okay, and we have example which satisfies this. So the comment is that uh, the key aspect is that we not only look for the optimizer, why, but we also look at the equilibrium pricing vector. The second is that uh, in both approaches, each agent is behaving rationally by maximizing his expected utility. The difference of the two approaches, Burman and Sort, is that in Burman, A is given, while in the Sort, A is part of the solution of the problem. So, and we are, so we are uh, increasing the ex systemic expected utility clearly. So the idea, the basic message is that uh, sort of gives priority to the systemic aspect because we are solving the soup with respect to this uh, in order to optimize the overall systemic performance rather than to single individual rationality, okay? Because you see, even though each one is rational behaving, the, Optimal solution here with systemic, it will depend on the whole system. Now we go to the <coughs> generalization of this concept. So we now turn to a more general utility function, which is a, a multivariate one. And this <coughs> will allow to consider a systemic component in addition to the sum of the single utility. This will allow us also to introduce a Nash equilibrium concept. And uh, technically, uh, the, the proof are quite different because we have also to exploit a different duality. So here is now the new setting where we have a multivariate utility function which is decomposed in these two terms. So the first term is what we have been considering up till now. So I will not talk anymore on this. UN are uh, um, concave and increasing. Now I am not requiring differentiability on you, but this is on the technical side. The conceptual point is that we introduce this uh, systemic component, so which is a function from Rn to R, which still is concave and increasing, but not strictly, so we can assume, for example, delta equal to zero. I will show some example. And in that case, we are back to the, what I've been presenting up till now. And uh, the other two conditions, this is called the sociability condition, it's simply kind of another condition for lambda, essentially, and on B, the same, exactly the same assumption of the previous uh, paper, okay? So convex cone, cross and probability. So now we want to solve the same problem in this setting, and, but before, since I will not have time to go in too much into detail in the assumption we, we require, but just some example of utility functionals that satis will satisfy all our assumptions are the following. So here are the single agent utility function that depends on, uh, on J now. And uh, here is the systemic component, which could be of this form, some function of the sum of this one. And the function U could be of exponential type, like this one, or of the power type, okay? Uh, just, these are just some examples. In addition, since we are not uh, requiring integra um, differentiability, we could take as the lambda the uh, power two, for example, or any power uh, of the negative part of x. So here you have also the product xj, xk with a minus uh, part, so with a negative part of it, okay? So this could be one possible other um, selection for lambda. So now we introduce the notion of Nash equilibrium, which before we could not introduce because of our setting. And so, okay, if you start with a vector y, y minus n is simply, we suppress the nth component of the vector y. Okay, y minus n is the same vector except we suppress the nth component. And then this new vector, you replace the nth component of y with zeta. Okay? So with this notation, now you look at the expected utility of the single agent. Now we don't have only the utility of the agent, but we have also the aggregate lambda. Okay? So what is computed over y and zeta is what can vary here. Okay? So as usual, what is a Nash equilibrium, <coughs> so y is a Nash equilibrium for a set of feasible location if uh, y is better off than any zeta, any feasible zeta, given that all the other agents keep the same strategy. So all the player here keeps the same strategy, so y n, y minus n is fixed, okay, y minus n is fixed. So you are allowed, only agent n is allowed to change only his strategies, the player n, and then uh, there is a, uh, this is a kind of, is the notion of Nash equilibrium. So it's uh, <coughs> the strategy, uh, 
uh, yj is the one that uh, maximizes this expected utility given that all the other agents keep the same strategy, all the other players. So the same notion I was introducing before now has this form. Now we have to introduce this expected utility as I already introduced. Here the single agent, the systemic part, and, uh, and uh, then we take the supremum of the always with respect to n, so the single agent here supreme, except that now you have to take into consideration that there are presence also of the aggregate term lambda. And then you take the sup of the all uh, utility between of uh, with respect to x plus y, and now y has to satisfy the same budget constraint as these are e equally equal as before, and then you take the supremum of this quantity with respect to our possible allocation. And the definition is that uh, this triple is a multivariate systemic optimal risk transfer equilibrium if uh, the same three condition holds, but now this quantity are the one which are given here, okay? And uh, clearly, the same clearing condition, A must be optimal for this problem. And then uh, the, we have existent uniqueness and Pareto allocation and Nash equilibrium property as it is written here, so we show this under three different set of assumptions, which we call A, B, and C. So we have to give three proof of this existence results. And in one of these setup, and assuming that U is also differentiable, then you have unique, we have uniqueness, and the optimal Y is also Pareto allocation. Okay, these are the main result, and uh, the assumption are the following. So these are the three setup. So we have four assumptions. In setup A, we hold only one and two holes. In setup B, only two and three, and so on. And uh, as you see here is the same assumption as before, but then we, in the setup B, for example, we don't need anymore this setup, but we require these two conditions. Now, the third condition is simple, is asymptotic elasticity, is part of the assumption of reasonable asymptotic elasticity. This is the generalization of reasonable asymptotic elasticity in the multivariate setting, so this is also something that one could expect. This, the second one instead, is a, a condition which tells us the relation among the utility function, the single agent, and the lambda term. Okay, there must be some compatibility. It's a kind of compatibility between the behavior of the utility on the minus infinity and the lambda on the same uh, quadrant. So under this assumption, as I said, the utility I presented before, the example, satisfies these assumptions. So just a few words about one example of a set B of uh, that of feasible constraints. So this also come back to your question. So suppose uh, you, we want to, we have a system of N agent and we divide them into H groups, H groups. Each group is denoted with IM, okay? So we require that the component of Y is a constant, not for all the sum or the Y, but only for the Y in the group. So we are dividing the banks into H groups. And if we, fa if we have exactly n groups, then this means that we have no sum here because in, in each group there is only one y, so this must be a, a deterministic quantity because it must be equal to a constant, so we have Rn. So in this case, we have no risk sharing because we are only sharing constant. On the opposite side, we have only one group. This is the Burman case, so we have the largest possible class as in Burman. I finish with this. <coughs> And so this example, this partition, you can make it scenario dependent uh, clustering in the following way. It's better if we look at this simple example. So the set B, first of all, suppose A is a, a set in omega, and then we take the complement of the set A. Okay, so this set means that if A happens, we don't have any risk sharing because we are allowed to share only constant, Rn. Instead, in the component of A, we allow for full risk sharing. The set A, for example, could be the case where bank N is uh, close to the fold. In, the set, in this case, we would like that bank, a, bank N is maybe too dangerous for the system, so she cannot take part of the risk exchange mechanism, so we require that we can exchange constant. We don't take the risk if it is too risky. 
Okay, this is just one example to show that with this cluster you can consider many different examples. And then the technical aspect, I will skip them. Just this to show that duality we need to use is a little bit different than the standard one. And uh, these are the paper on which the talk is based. And thank you for your attention. Thank <laughs> you.